Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. This is Garden Air and my name is Natalie. And today I am not really doing anything all that specific. I'm just walking around the gardens today. Figured I'd film, show you what's up, what's growing, some things that I wanna do, some plans and a little bit of a garden tour. So it's really just a day in the garden. And so I'm going to show you a couple of tips and tricks, um, how to identify male and female flowers on your squash plants. Um, we'll talk about some watermelons and I don't know, we'll see what comes up in the garden and what I feel like doing. I know I want to make some refrigerator pickles. So if you want to see how that is done, let me know in the comments below and I will definitely make a video of when I'm, I'm doing up some refrigerator pickles because that's different than the canning pickles that you would make in your canner. They're easier, they're quick, and you just pop them in your fridge. Um, oh, also we have a little bit of a surprise today and something that we added to the garden yesterday and it really is adorable so you'll have to check that out and we'll see what's going on I've, I've I'm very congested today we have so much pollen in the air right now and my sinuses are like insane so you'll probably hear it in my voice today that I'm a little like Ugh, nasally and not feeling the best plus we have uh window people here we're getting our windows replaced so there's some noise so i'm going to try to stay down in the back gardens where it's a little bit more quiet but i will walk up here and show you what's going on i have some beautiful dahlias just beginning to bloom the roses are just starting their second flush which i'll have to really record later because they're just beginning um a lot of lilies are in blossom and the crocosmia is blooming which is such a hummingbird magnet so if you don't have red crocosmia and you like hummingbirds i really recommend you getting that plant because they just love it so without further ado let's head into the garden and see what's going on So I'm standing over my butternut squash plants and I was going to show you the difference between a male flower and a female flower. So if we hone in on this flower here, we can see that it's a male with its stamen sticking up straight and you just see one tip. There's some pollinating little insects in there right now doing their job, so that's a good thing. So this is a male flower and it will produce pollen to pollinate the female flowers. So if we go along the same plant, down a vine down here, I know there is a female flower down here. And you can right away see the difference in the flowers. So see how we have three heads here and the heads are a little bit rounded and this flower is um, it's created so that it can um, collect the pollen. So when the pollinating insects come visit, the pollen from the male flower will end up sticking all over the little pistils of the female flower. So you can see right away the differences in the flowers. And if you're not getting a lot of pollinating insects, what you can do is pick a male flower and bring it to the female flower and just rub the stamens all over the pistils and help it pollinate that way. So a lot of times if your squashes aren't pollinated thoroughly or completely, you'll end up with a partial squash that grows and then it just kind of ends up going bad. It looks like it kind of rots out and it won't properly form. So pollinating insects are really important. We need to get the little visitors in there or else self-pollinate ourselves. This is a yellow crookneck squash plant and it's pretty much the same way. So if I look at this flower, look, I have more insects down in there. So that's awesome that these guys are in there doing their job. This again is a male flower. And let's see if I can find a female. It's a little early in the morning. I don't know if I have any female flowers open right now, but I do have a crookneck squash beginning right there. So that was a female flower. Um, another way you can tell the female flowers is they'll have this little bulb at the base of each flower. 
whereas the males don't. See, if I hone in on these buds, so here's a male flower here, here, weeds everywhere. Here's a male flower here. And if I look at the buds, right away I can tell this bud is going to be a female because it has that little bulb ready to produce a squash should it get pollinated. So even before they open these little buds, you can tell right away where the females are going to be producing. So you can keep your eye on your squash flowers. There's another little pollinator down in this flower, little bee. So if you keep an eye on your squash flowers um, and you're not getting a lot of pollinators, go ahead and pollinate them by hand. You can use a paintbrush or you can just bring a flower to a flower. But make sure you can recognize the males from the females. This is one of my big cucumber plants. And I brought some cucumbers in from it just yesterday. Was it yesterday? And already I have some others getting ready. So these are a really good pickling size here. So I'm probably going to pick a few, get them gathered up, maybe do a little jar of refrigerator pickles because I don't have a lot to really do full canning pickles at the moment. I have a few cucumbers inside and then a few on these vines. I might have some more tucked into those vines over there. Those are all market more cucumbers. And I know there's um, a climbing variety in there as well that'll give me a smaller cucumber. So I'm gonna check those through and maybe do some refrigerator pickles today because they're much more, they're very quick to make and you don't have to can a refrigerator pickle. There's some beets. Things just kind of growing through here. I got a lot of random stuff in this box. This, um, this particular cucumber was not planned. It showed up from apparently a seed that was le left over from last year grew here. So he kind of invaded the carrots I planted in there. So I'm probably gonna trim this back a little bit because I think he's shading these carrots too much. And I'm just getting over a cold, so you might hear it in my voice. There's another cucumber. So yeah, I probably have just the right amount in all of these cucumbers to make some refrigerator pickles today. And my dill looks fabulous, so We'll definitely be throwing some dill in with these pickles today. So this is chamomile, and if you've never had fresh chamomile right out of the garden, I tell you, you are missing out. The dried chamomile does not compare to a fresh brood of chamomile. <laughs> tea. It's amazing. I love it so much that I put in a little fire pit over here the other day and built myself a little tripod out of sticks from the woods just so I can brew chamomile tea out here in the garden while I'm working. So my little teapot hangs from there and I just make myself a little fire, throw some chamomile, sometimes some lemon balm or some peppermint, and I brew my herbal teas right out here in the garden so I can drink tea while I'm spending the day out here working. So that's nice. One of these days I'll catch a video of that. There's some carrots. Some zinnias. Some tomatoes I didn't have room for in the garden so I left them in their buckets. And they're just over here. They're small but they're still over here trying to perform. There's Lady. Hi, Bug. <laughs> and my, um, my potatoes are in here doing really well. I hope they're doing really well. I haven't been able to get down and see if they're forming anything, so I'm just letting them be, letting them do their thing until they turn brown and hoping to get a bunch of tomatoes out of them. 
So this is my watermelon and it's been really slow growing. Hoping that I have enough time to really actually grow a watermelon. I have one formed right there and look at how tiny it is. So if I don't have success with the watermelons this year, I'm just going to start them. Oh, there's another one. Next year, I'm going to start them much sooner in the greenhouse. I didn't really have my greenhouse functioning early spring yet because we just put it up and I didn't really get to take full advantage of it early this spring. But next year I will. And so next year I want to start the watermelons much sooner, get them going, give them more time and see if that makes a big difference. So this is a watermelon flower if you're interested in what they look like. And the, they just vine all over the place and they have these really cute geranium kind of type kind of leaves. And so I think since I have two watermelons forming, I'm going to cut back a lot of these extra vines so that they don't start putting my energy into more watermelons because it's already late July. I think what today is the 19th. So I want to try to let my plant put all the energy it possibly can into the two watermelons that I'm seeing up here. They're up on the support, so they're off the ground. So all of these extra vines down here, I think I'm just going to remove um, so that the plant isn't wait. This is a whole separate plant. Maybe I can give this plant to somebody. It's so late in the season though, and these guys are still so small. But I'm gonna cut back anything off of the plant. I don't have to remove this one because it's a separate plant and it's not going to affect this watermelon anyway. So I'm gonna go down and check the plant that those watermelon is on and then cut away, like there's an extra vine going off that way. So I'll cut off that vine and I'll cut off anything not needed by the plant so it can take spend all of its energy on forming these watermelons instead of trying to make new leaves, new vines, new flowers, new watermelons. It, all the energy kind of gets transpersed all, all around the plant instead of where I need it right now and that's on those watermelons. And we have a little grasshopper hanging out on the plant. <laughs> so all these little critters. So these are my bell peppers. Got some flowers. In there, my bell pepper plants are getting huge. Usually, they start producing on me before the plant gets very big, and this year they've really put spent some time putting on size before they produce. So I'm hoping that they're they're nice and strong by the time the peppers actually start coming along, and that this will make a good difference in the quality of the peppers that I get because I've been feeding everything so much this year. This is a baby green bean. I'm waiting to start taking over this pole. So yeah. All right, so these are pumpkins and I didn't have a lot of space for pumpkins this year. So I just threw two seeds at the side of the garden and said, I'll figure it out when they grow. And boy, are they growing. They are huge. And look at the size of these leaves. So they're growing very well. So I'm letting them come out and come over the side of the netting. And I guess I'll just let them kind of go out into the lawn. Um, and then I'll cut back anything that gets unruly. Like I'm going to have to definitely cut this off down in here, get rid of this, this leaf because it's starting to invade the tomatoes and keep trying to get the plant to go away from the tomatoes. So anything growing in towards the tomatoes, like that junction right there, I'll have to cut. And I know I have a pumpkin starting here somewhere, right here, right there. So I want to start directing energy to the pumpkin. So that'll be another reason to get rid of that, that little junction there. And there's, there's a pumpkin flower with, with some little bees in there. We, um, we do have our own honeybees. So that's why you'll see so many pollinators on my blossoms.
check on these beets. The beets are forming really good. So the other night I pulled in some beets from the garden because I had some nice big ones ready. And I sliced them up with some apples and I just threw us like some maple syrup and some cinnamon over them in a dish. And I baked everything together and oh, it was delicious. Really good. It was just something I decided to do on a whim and it was so darn good. So beets, apples, cinnamon, and a little maple syrup and it was delicious. This is my morning glory and it's just growing and growing and growing. It's probably going to start climbing on top of the greenhouse so I'll have to cut some of that back because I don't want it damaging the greenhouse at all. So I have to get in and clip that back. But it's gotten massive and it's not flowering yet. I have, I have not seen a single flower on it yet. But I would imagine that they're coming soon because this is definitely mature enough to start any day. Isn't that beautiful though? With or without flowers, it's really pretty. But I think next year, I'm going to put beans here instead and let the beans do this. And then I can come out and harvest beans all up this trellis instead of the morning glories. Might be a better use for this spot. But it is beautiful. I threw these seeds in kind of late after we got the greenhouse finished. So these are sunflowers and zinnias, which I like to put all around the garden to help keep the pollinators directed over towards the garden. So I have like snapdragons and there's a rose bush and just some little things I threw in um, to help attract pollinators over here. This was a little extra spot I had, so some of my bucket tomatoes that I showed you earlier are thrown over in here. Um, so these guys are a little bit small, but they are producing. <laughs> There's one little tomato um, on this guy and it looks nice and healthy. No blossom end rot. The leaves are a little bit curled. So we'll see how these guys do. They were stuck in a bucket and probably a little tight on space. So now that the roots can kind of like spread out, we'll see if it's actually three plants. We'll see how they actually end up performing being transplanted. And then those are some leeks. Also some extra leeks I had in a bucket. So those guys kind of got thrown over in here because it was just an extra space not doing anything. So I put some of my little bucket babies in here. The corn is doing good. It's finally taller than me. Look at how beautiful this is. I love this little corn spot. Um, the ears are forming and we're getting silks. So again, we want to help the pollination a little bit. Yes, we have a lot of wind here because we're near Chicago. We are in Illinois, so we get good wind, um, but I want to ensure that my corn gets well pollinated. So when I come over here, I have a lot of corn tops that are in full pollen. So what I can do, there's an off uh, ear here with a lot of silk. These silks need to collect the pollen so that everything pollinates and gets down into this ear and your beautiful corn can form down inside. So I just take a corn stalk, give it a little shake. Maybe you can see, it just got all over my phone. All of this pollen just comes out of the, the grains at the top and it'll kind of like blow in through and get caught up in these silks and that's what you want so coming in occasionally just shaking it you can see some pollen on the leaves just kind of coming in and shaking your corn every now and then or even bringing some pollen directly to the silks will help ensure some good pollination for your corn that's why corn is kind of all clustered together 
when you grow it, it's kind of put into blocks so that when that pollen starts blowing through, you'll have a good chance of the ears all catching the pollen that they need for producing your corn. And lots of sun and feed your corn well. I'm always feeding these guys manure. So, and the onions are just coming along, doing their thing. Um, keep your onions watered really well. They need a good amount of water to really keep forming those bulbs. You don't want to overdo it because obviously you can rot the bulbs out. But don't be so afraid of rot that you underwater because they really do need more water than you think to keep those bulbs hydrated and forming. So these guys are still growing. The green tops are still nice and fresh. Nothing's really flopping over at this point yet. So we're just going to let these guys continue to do their thing. There's Fenrir. Hi, Fen. Isn't he cute? <laughs> Waddle, waddle, waddle. So we did a thing yesterday. Come on inside the shade garden and look up there. You can see Lady sitting there. She's all intrigued. But we have a pair of bunnies. <laughs> this is just a temporary um, cage for them right now. We actually have a double rabbit hutch coming in. It should be here in a couple of days. And then they'll be like kind of like stacked with like removable trays so they're easy to clean so the all white one is a New Zealand buck his name is Rune and then the little one with a little brown nose and tipped ears that's our female and her name is Taro <laughs> and she is half New Zealand half Cali Californian But they are very, very sweet. They're very, very um, calm and docile. So they do like to snuggle and they are so super soft. And these guys are only eight weeks old. So they're still babies with a lot of growth to do. So we'll be breeding them for bunnies and it'll be, it'll be fun. So we have these two little cuties joining the garden. And I'll get some updates when we have their hutch ready. She's munching on cucumber leaves right now. <laughs> so, Taro and Rune. Lady, are you watching the bunnies? Are you bunny sitting? She has been glued to that spot ever since we brought the bunnies home yesterday. And when she gets close to them, she just wags her tail and tries to lick them. And she's like my mama dog. She loves baby animals and like little kids anything that's a baby she is all for her mama instincts come out and she turns herself inside out when it comes to babies it's the sweetest thing she's such a good girl <laughs> take you up through the shade garden real quick I'm not going to spend too much time over here today because we are getting um, windows replaced so there's trucks in my driveway and workers walking around thumping and turning on power drills and all sorts of things so it's busy today but take you a little walk through here really quick have some lilies in bloom up there just beautiful and hydrangeas are starting to bloom I'm just trying to get the bunnies situated and comfy today, cleaning out buckets for their food and making sure everything's going to be nice and secure for storing all of their needs out here as well, out in the shed. So it's a beautiful day, We're just getting things done.
Look at this flax. It is so pretty. Just this beautiful color. So this is a tall garden flax. One of my favorite daylilies is in bloom right now. This one right here. So beautiful. I don't remember its name though, I'm sorry. But it's so pretty, that double peachy color. It's gorgeous. So we have more things coming over here and I'm really waiting on these um, perennial hibiscus to bloom. There's another flax down here and perennial hibiscus just take their time. They're such a late summer flower. And so I'm waiting on those guys yet. And more lilies still to open. Benjamin Britton is opening a some new roses. The roses are all coming along for their second flush. So I have buds and growth all over the rose bushes right now, but there's not a lot of blooms on the roses at this moment. So the rose garden is looking a little bit bare. Scepter Dial is over here growing off, starting to open. So I'll show you this one. Just a beautiful rose on Scepter Dial. Really nice performer. Beautiful bubblegum pink. Lots of pistols in the center. So she's, she really opens up this nice yellowy center. Uh, soft powdery fragrance on Scepter Dial. Not very strong. There's a Malvern Hills over there that I almost lost this summer. I thought it was a goner this spring, but it has managed to come back and now it's over here blooming. So little Malvern Hills that I've been kind of nursing back to health. Look at the buds on Scepter Isle. She's really starting to get ready. My tiny little Munstead Wood. So all of this, these guys are doing great. We're just waiting for that second flush and more lilies to come along and start blooming. My um, Oriental lilies definitely are taking their time this year. The only ones that have bloomed already were the ones that I planted this year, so they were already in bud when I got them. So, like, my Casablanca already bloomed because it was in bud when I bought it this year. So, the rest of my Orientals are definitely taking their time. Like this guy here, I think this might be a stargazer. And then the ones in the back, this one here, um, should be a Tiger Woods. So walking up through here, I might Crocosmias are in bloom, which the butterflies love. My other Munstead Wood Rose is starting to bloom. So all of these roses are also putting out their second flush. Everything's busy out here. Another gorgeous tall flax there. Um, starting to fade out because it already had its peak. But look at this. Oh, she's beautiful. Ancient Mariner. Putting out a beautiful second flush. The first flush this year was not at, at its best because of all the rain we had in spring. It just bunched up my buds so bad. So I've really been looking forward to the second flush on all the roses. And it looks like it's going to prove, be, uh, prove to be better than the first flush this year. So, Desdemona's got a bunch of buds out. <laughs> and Lady Shallot. Sorry for all the trucks in the background. We have so much going on right now. Uh, Abraham Darby. Oh, look at Poet's Wife back there. Look at her. Oh, Poet's Wife, she is blooming beautifully i love this rose beautiful yellow she goes all the way over there more buds and just such a pretty fragrance on poet's wife such a pretty rose really really love her it's a lady of shallot uh, my uh never mind my beetle water for japanese beetles there again is my Bells of Ireland that I did a whole video on talking about just this plant. So you can go back and look for that. Look at this. 
Lady of Shallot. She is so pretty. Pretty, pretty rose. My Jude the Obscure is starting to bloom. She's not all, all that different from Lady of Shallot until you look a little bit closely, more closely. The leaves are a little different. The blooms are a little bit more yellow and Jude just has a beautiful fragrance. Um, she will open a little bit more cup shaped than Lady of Shallot does, but the fragrance is just divine. Beautiful fragrance on Jude the Obscure. And we're just waiting on things over here. I've got that big dahlia right there. That's a dinner plate dahlia that is still growing, so it's not ready to bloom just yet. This is a full sun hydrangea. Um, this is these panicle hydrangeas with the, long, the big uh, cone-shaped flower heads. This is a vanilla strawberry. And these guys are great performers for me. I have another vanilla strawberry out in the back behind the pool. And it's just a gorgeous, gorgeous um, hydrangea that will open white and slowly kind of start turning pink along its tips, which is why it's called the vanilla strawberry. Just beautiful. This little hydrangea is kind of an accident because I put in a hydrangea tree here a couple of years ago and a really bad windstorm like snapped the tree right in half and we thought it was a goner and instead now what and now it just kind of came up and it's now just a typical hydrangea bush which is fine i think this is actually a limelight and um so now it's just a bush instead of a tree <laughs> and i wasn't expecting anything once the tree the tree broke and fell so i'm actually happy to see that the hydrangea itself has been able to flourish and thrive and flower so we're just going to give this time now to grow and get big and one day it'll be a big beautiful hydrangea we're on this edge i have another big perennial hibiscus and this one is older than the other one i put this one in a couple of years ago and again, it's taking its time. These guys are just slow. But once it starts to bloom, which will be very soon, it is absolutely fabulous. Huge, huge flowers on perennial hibiscus. So they are pretty amazing. This dahlia is starting to grow, or it is starting to flower. So I have one flower open on this gorgeous dahlia. And more buds on the way. So I'm, I never really grow dahlias, so I'm pretty new to them still. This is the first time I've grown dinner plates, so I'm excited to see them do really well. So if you have any tips for me on dahlias, I would appreciate it. We can talk dahlias down in the comments below. A little Coreopsis and some foxgloves I started from seed, so those will flower next year. Box club is a biennial. So, so I think that's everything I really wanted to do today. I have some cleaning up around the garden to do, and just enjoy this beautiful day. These are sweet peas. So I thank you for coming along and watching me today and enjoying the flowers. Hope you all have an absolutely wonderful day. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching guys. Please hit like and subscribe and we will have lots more videos coming up in the future with more tips and tricks and how to's with gardening and just all sorts of stuff. We're going to do some more cooking eventually as the harvest season rolls around and we'll ju we're just going to stay busy. So even when it's not garden season, we'll still find things to talk about and do on this channel. So thank you for watching and have a wonderful day. Bye.